Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of NetApp Insight 2024 here in Las Vegas at the MGM. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host, Rob Streche. Rob, a message that's coming loud and clear is that NetApp's strategic partnerships with cloud providers is really transforming the way businesses get work done and, and allows for greater efficiency and innovation. It's exciting. Yeah, no, I mean, I, having been at AWS when FSx ONTAP was launched there, I, I can tell you it, it took off. It was a great way to go and I, I think that people don't just have their data in one place. They want to le leverage services that are at all of the different hyperscalers and NetApp really has a very unique position in that. Well, here to tell us more is Pravjit Tuana. He is the SVP and GM of Cloud Operations. Thank you so much for coming on theCUBE. Thank you so much for having me here. So, as we were saying, NetApp is the only enterprise storage vendor with native services across all major cloud providers. This is a unique position, and Absolutely. how does it how does it benefit NetApp in terms of what it offers to customers? See, <laughs> the way we look into it is right, like it creates a win-win for both our customers, right? ONTAP has a history of building a lot of good storage capabilities over the last two decades, be it about the protocols, or be it about the unified storage, or be it about the data protection or security capabilities which we have built. And then we couple it with the advantages which come from hyperscaler, right? Like we get global availability. Now, thanks to our all three major hyperscaler partners in Amazon, uh, uh, Microsoft, and Google, we are in 100 plus regions now. So the global availability, if a customer needs data in a local sovereign or they want an air gap, all those capabilities are there. Then on top of that, they also get a lot of uh, things around the security which hyperscale partners are investing in, right? Like, for example, this year, we worked with Microsoft for more than six months as part of their strategic future, uh, security future investments, and our developers have been co-working with them, so we are come together raising the bar on security, getting the best from the hyperscaler side of the things, best from on tap side. Same thing goes around compliances, same thing goes around like, and the more interesting thing is, right, like, Hyperscalers have a lot of these other services also available, especially in the field of AI, right? Like what you have with Bedrock in uh, Amazon or Vortex, Azure AI yeah. Search yeah. In, or Vortex AI in Google, right? Our customers are able to get all those capabilities now natively available as part of the first party service. So it's a combination of all the goodness which we have, both on the on type side and also on our hyperscaler partners, which really is powerful for our customers. And we being the first party, right, like we, customers get the same uh, experience, same be it on billing, be it on onboarding, be it on the GTM motions, be it in consumption through consoles, API, SDK, CLI. So it creates a very powerful narrative for customers to solve and accelerate their business problems. Yeah, no, I, I think again, you know, both of us having been around the cloud block, I guess you could say, and I don't mean block storage, but I mean, <laughs> you, when you start to look at it, I think it's a really fun position that you're in here because, you, again, you're, you're looking at it, there's co-opetition because they have their own services and things like that, but you're bringing a very unique set of things to customers, that hybrid nature, that really, I, I mean, again, they all try to do it, and. Both of us were there probably trying to build the same stuff. And when you start to look at it, you, 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 you take a step back. It really is about these organizations. We heard from J&J &J about how they're using it for their AI. And do you see that as the uniqueness and that they're embracing NetApp in that way because of that hybrid nature? Yeah, it means, <coughs> First, like, right, like the good thing is, right, like what we, all the three hyperscalers, same as NetApp, they are also very customer obsessed, right? Every solution which is out there or every capability which is out there is based on what they are hearing from their customers, right? And our customers have trusted with us for storage needs for more than two decades at this point, right? So they are also expecting same kind of experience, same kind of trust, same kind of security, same kind of richness in cloud, and, and that's how, when our hyperscaler partners are listening to those customers and doing that thing. So uh, we don't see it as like a competition or anything, right? Like uh, it's purely based on the customer choices that they are picking up uh, services. And storage is one of those things also, right? Like 
it takes a long time to take it right in terms of right, like the capabilities, the operational maturity, the security, governance, compliance. There is no compression algorithm to things like scale and all those kind of things. So right, like we have those two decades of experience building those for our customers and our customers, joint customers between hyperscalers and us are really enjoying that capabilities being available in the cloud also. So NetApp is a company with a robust portfolio of hardware, and yet there is, NetApp is also encouraging and supporting customers using data in the cloud. So mm -hmm. what, is, what is the impetus for that? Sure. We see us as an intelligent data infrastructure company. We want to be at all the places where the data is, right? Like yes, uh, in certain use cases where enterprise use cases, the hardware driven approach is there, which also is complemented with a very so a lot of software engineering work which we have done and build the whole on tap layer and uh, so on. So from that perspective, right, like, um, the reason we are in uh, hyperscalers is because our customers are asking for that. That's the, it's the new reality, right? The data is at multiple places. Cloud is one of the main components of where the data lives. And wherever the data lives, we want to bring that richness of what we have built. NetApp is where the data are. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think it made a lot of sense. And uh, you know, we had George on last night. We had Chris on earlier today. Uh, we've had a number of people, and it's about you know bringing the AI to the data. In a lot of cases, whatever that means to the end customer. Like you said, working backwards from the customer as yeah. we, and looking around the corner uh, to see where they want to go next and being right about that. I, I think when you look at that, I, I think again, the customers have been coming back to this, help us manage this in a hybrid cloud manner. How do you, how do you see NetApp really helping manage the data at scale in this hybrid manner? Yes. Yeah, so, uh, we have lots and lots of customers who are either only on cloud storage or they are in hybrid setup. Two out of the five customers which we onboard today, they are actually set up in the hybrid setup, right? Like, so they have some, their data on the on-premise and they, so where we really shine is around multiple things, right? Especially around, like, if you look into, right, like how customer journey starts with, into the cloud is, right, like usually, they start with the scenarios like disaster recovery, or they want an instant elasticity in the cloud, or they want to instant capacity in the cloud, right, those kind of things. And in the fullness of time, they start moving their workloads over to the cloud. Some, some companies might move one or two, some might move tens of them, right? It depends upon their choices. Uh, so where we shine is are the capabilities which we have built around data migration, data mobility, uh, the, the whole aspect of our Blue XP where you can use it for multi-cloud setup uh, and get a similar familiar experience which you do to manage one cloud or enterprise and so on. So that's where our customers really, really like us. And as I said before, that the trust which they have in NetApp storage system is extended over to the hyperscaler clouds also. And it's also about the simplicity, right? I, I mean, I, yeah. I would, because again, both of us know how I've configured a lot of cloud storage in my yeah. life. And yeah. I, I think, and having been at NetApp as well, I, yeah. I think, you know, it's always been a focus of simplicity as well. Yes, the frictionless experience and simplicity of migration, deployment, even operations is very, very important, right? Like, we earlier this year launched uh, Blue XP Workload Factory, which is predominantly to make things simpler, right? Like, hey, when you migrate your VMware workload or you migrate your SQL Server or Oracle workloads, right? How do you make it very simple and frictionless for customer and at the same time give the cost efficiency as well as adherence to the cloud best practices and best architectures and so on? Same thing is what we are doing in AI, right? Like, if you see, we are integrated with, say, Amazon Bedrock, right? Like, to provide the LLM models over to, uh, if you have data stored in FSx for ONTAP, and we are looking into similar things for doing for um, Vortex AI and BigQuery in Google, and Azure One Lake, and all the Azure AI analytics services. The idea there is, right, like there is so much of complexity when it comes to managing your rag-based infrastructures, to building these apps in low-code, no-code environments. That's where we are bringing lots of simplicity working with our uh, partners. Uh, and you're absolutely right, like it's about frictionless experience, it's about scale, it is about security, it is about uh, experience which you can really enjoy. 
Well, you mentioned the best practices for cloud. I imagine that the best practices for AI are still being written. In fact, you're, you're helping to write them. So how are you, how are you building the plane as you're flying it in terms, yeah. in terms of making sure that you are doing things correctly for business-wise, but also ethically, responsibly, and sustainably? Yes, so we have lots of things, right? Like for instance, I'll start with Gen AI Toolkit, which we have for our Azure NetApp files and Google Cloud NetApp volumes. The idea behind there is that, hey, you can bring your own LLM models and use it against your proprietary data set without the need to moving the data anywhere, right? So this is an, a, a way in which customers can play with it, learn with it, and make sure that they are very sure about that, hey, we are meeting the compliance, the data leakage problems, and those kind of um, things. But you're absolutely right also, right? Like, AI is still in early stages. This reminds me of uh, when I started on the cloud journey 10, 15 years back. We are kind of in a similar kind of paradigms are coming, standards are being set hybrid, on-prem, cloud, all those things are very similar paradigm from that perspective. I, I think the investments which we are doing in, at NetApp for things like data classification, right, um, or, and making sure our core principle in AI is that you don't have to move data anywhere, right? We want to bring AI to you, right? So that the problem starts when you start creating silos of data, right? Like, and then you don't know suddenly what is under what governance, what compliance, and so on. So we are really, really laser focused that we don't get into that problem with AI, and that's why if you see our whole strategy around AI is, right, how do you bring AI to the data without the need to moving data? But the standard will keep on evolving as an industry. Uh, we are part of that industry, and uh, we will, the idea here is to be, quick to respond to those and embrace those standards. Yeah, so I think one of the things I found interesting, again, uh, great great keynote, by the way, this Thank morning. You. I thought it was really uh, fascinating, and I think when Harv came back on and was talking to Samit around uh, GCP and some of the stuff that you're doing with them that is, is pretty unique around uh, their GDC yeah. and things of that nature, and how you're also lowering costs for people. Yeah. That would seem like th this is great co-engineering that has to happen. Yes. Talk, talk to that kind of part of the relationship. Um, yes, so price performance optimization is one of our core dimensions of what we are doing in our cloud storage sources. Um, as I said in the keynote also, right, I don't want to, we don't want to be in a situation where cost is the reason for not using our hyperscaler services. We are doing tons and tons of investments, right? Like, there are all the things which I covered in Keynote um, around, right, like reserved price, capacity price, or private pricing, or especially our auto tiering, which gives really, really large uh, savings to customers back, and the different um, service plans which we have based on your workload profiles. Where we and hyperscalers are working together is also, right, like, yeah, we launched Flex service in Google. Uh, which is a software defined tier, which uses the native infrastructure available from Google itself, right? So we are working together on making sure we get optimizations in terms of price and performance from both sides of the spectrum, right? Like from our software layer as well as their infrastructure. And we also have, right, like our own flash arrays deployed in the data center. So we, this is, among the top three priorities for our organization to make sure that we give the best price performance to our customers. Yeah, oh, sorry, and I just following up on that because you also had Matt Wood last night on. <laughs> and you know, I, I, I want to give equal air time to uh, two of my friends, so <laughs> yeah. more of that. And you know, Matt, talking about how, uh, like you said, bedrock and yeah. bringing the AI and really being a first class citizen in there. I mean, you're a first party. Yeah already a first party. Do you see that as really, how, what, to your point, working backwards from the customers, the customers are driving those types of integrations because they rely on the security of NetApp and the governance that they have over it to then tie into using those tooling. That Abs tool. Absolutely, right, like, um, I, I think since you brought AWS, right, like AWS is known for embracing this of like, hey, customers owning uh, pretty much all of the roadmap. I think we uh, embrace the same sentiment and same mindset, right? So we are hearing from customers that, hey, we want, the customers told us that, hey, we want, ra right now the ra deployment of RAG infrastructure is com complex. That's why in our Blue XP workload factory for Gen AI, 
we made it so simple because now with only a few clicks, you can deploy your whole RAG infrastructure. Same thing they are saying that, hey, there are a lot of good foundational models available in Bedrock. How do we build really RAG rich applications which use the proprietary data which they have in FSx for on tap? And that's why we had that integration. And in fullness of time means we do see wherever customers tell us that, hey, whatever analytics and AI capabilities they want to use, we do want to provide that to them. Excellent, a great note to end on. Prabhjeet, thank you so much for coming on the show. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm Rebecca Knight for Rob Stretch. Keep it right here on theCUBE for more of our coverage of NetApp Insight 2024. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in enterprise tech news and analysis.